Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amata, or as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to begin proceedings with a little something from AMD and Renoir. So what we have is a Geekbench benchmark which has been posted by the Redditor Tams underscore MSC on r slash hardware. You can of course find the Reddit thread linked in the description below this video, so thank you very much to them. So what do we actually see in terms of the scores here? Well, we see a single core score of 4910 and a multi-core score of 21693. And of course, further down this particular image, you can see the specs, base frequency of 2 GHz and the max frequency of 4.19. And of course, this is a 8-core CPU. But speaking of benchmarks, we also have some for Intel, specifically the i9-10980HK. And this is all thanks to Tom Appisack on Twitter, who has tweeted three separate Geekbench listings for this particular processor. Of course, you can find his tweet linked in the description below this video. So let's just go through, first of all, what we can see on these particular results. Let's begin at the top of the stack, shall we? We see a single-core score of 5531 and a multi-core score of 31470. Moving on to the second result, we see 5458 for the single core and 31661 for the multi core. And then for the final result, we see a single core score of 5490 and 31738 for the uh, multi core, sorry, should I say. So to kind of round that up for you, this means we have an average single core score of roughly 5500 and a multi core score of roughly 31600 points. So, what does this actually mean in context? Well, it beats the performance of the desktop Ryzen 5 3600X in multi-core tests, but does fall short when compared, compared sorry, to the 3700X. But those are not the only Intel benchmarks we have from the 10th generation. We also have performance results for the 1075H and the i5-10300H. So the 10750 has 6 cores and 12 threads with a base clock of 2.6 GHz from what we have heard. So in Geekbench 5 we see a score in the single core for 1258 and 6065 in the multi-core benchmark test. But what about the final processor I mentioned, the i5-10300H, which has reportedly got a base clock of 2.5 GHz and an all-core boost of 4.3 GHz. Now this is not a Geekbench listing this time around, this time it is Passmark, and as you can see the Passmark rating is 3927, a CPU mark rating of 9501, and of course you can see all the other results um, on the, the screen right now and of course you can find the passmark listing linked in the description below this video. So the important thing to take away from all of these benchmarks is that yes that these processors are a significant improvement on the predecessors that came before them. For example the 10980HK when compared to its predecessor the 9980HK we see a 14% better multi-core and 5% better single core performance. As for the 10750H, we see a 7% better single core and 5% better multi-core test, once again compared to the previous generation. Now, given that I just talked about Renoir in the previous topic, it is also of course mentioning that, well, these are pretty much in the range of the 4000U series processors from AMD, which basically means that the H series is going to have a bit of a bad time in comparison to the Renoir lineup. I feel that Intel is definitely going to feel the pinch a little bit in the high-end mobility space um, this upcoming generation, the 10th generation mobile processors to be more specific. But of course, time will tell how well each processor uh, line ends up doing, but I have a feeling that Renoir is going to give Intel more than a run for its money, at least in comparison to these particular processors in the 10th Gen H series. And for our final Intel related piece of news for today, we have an interesting report from DigiTimes. So all the report basically says is that Intel are expected, according to their sources, to cut their prices on PC processors in the second half of 2020. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have any further information on what this can actually be, like what processes we will actually see cut here. But I would expect it to be Comet Lake, just to make Comet Lake more competitive versus what AMD have on the table. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. We're going to move over now from the CPU side to the GPU side, as we have a couple of things to get through from NVIDIA. And once again, this was discovered by Tom Apisak, but also reported by videocards.com, so thank you very much to them both. So basically what we have seen is a new entry, and once again for Geekbench, showcasing a GTX 20 mobile series, the RTX 2080 Super, which is codenamed N18G3R. And if you scroll down a little bit on the Geekbench listing, which of course will be linked below for your convenience as well as the video cards article, you can see that the device name is the GeForce RTX 20 Super with Max-Q design. Now of course this is not the first time we have heard of a Super card coming to notebooks. You may recall that notebookcheck.com uh, revealed a slide some time ago showing several GPUs which were coming to Max-Q laptops. So this is basically further cementing those rumours. Now interestingly, you can also see on the CPU information for the Geekbench listing here that it does use a Comet Lake processor, the 10980HK, so one of the ones we just spoke about. And this gives us a rough window as to when we can expect this 2080 Super Mobile variant to actually be available on the market because Intel has already said, as video cards point out, that we will be seeing Comet Lake H launching this quarter. So it's going to be sooner rather than later that we see the 2080 cards out in the wild, assuming of course these are all legitimate, but I'll be surprised if they weren't given the evidence. But as with anything, rumours, just take it with a pinch of salt until we have official information. But let's move over to NVIDIA's MX350 and MX330. So once again we have videocards.com to thank for this, but this was initially posted on the Laptop Video To Go forums. And as you can see, we have several driver listings in the forum posts here, which show added support for the MX350 and MX330 graphics cards. So this information does indicate that the MX300 series will still focus on Pascal. Now, just to refresh your memory, the last two generations have featured Pascal in the MX2, and we've seen Maxwell in the generation previous to that. So we are still seeing Pascal in the MX3 line, but we are not going to be seeing a rebranding here, at least according to what we are speculating on at this moment. So we're not going to be seeing a rebranding, at least looking at the numbers here, but we will most likely be seeing a refresh, at least on the lower end, the higher end, well, speculation could run wild here. But let's move on to our closing two topics, which is console related. And we have, first of all, up next, Xbox. Now, this is just some fun speculation that I'm about to do. We've been talking a lot about specs of both machines. Unsurprisingly, we are tech nerds at the end of the day. But there's been a lot of talk as well about how busy Microsoft have been nabbing studios and working hard to make sure the meme about Xbox not having many games doesn't happen again. So Phil Spencer recently tweeted something very intriguing. He said, quote, great to be back in Japan with the team, talking and listening to amazing studios and publishers about 2020 and beyond. Really strong energy and excitement here about gaming's future. Now, this isn't just some fun little holiday that Phil and his team are having. They are obviously trying to get more publishers on board for the Xbox Series X. We have seen them do this before when they took a trip to Japan and Korea to talk to publishers about E3 uh, of 2019. So of course it's pure speculation as to what we could be seeing. We might see timed exclusives, we could just see games coming to Game Pass, we could just see, hey, can we show you a game at E3 and stuff like that. Well, you know, the speculation, it could literally be endless, but I'm very intrigued to see what we have on the table. I will not be surprised if some of these talks are happening with From Software. I'm not expecting any time exclusivity or anything like that, but I'll be surprised to not see something about Elden Ring at their E3 2020 conference. So, are there any particular Japanese titles that you would like to see release on Xbox? There are so, so, so many to choose from, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So, let's finish up, shall we, with something 
regarding the PS5. Now, unfortunately, there's no real specifics here regarding the specs of the machine or anything like that, but we have some comments from Colin Moriarty, who made a comment during a recent episode of Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast, which was then posted on comicbook.com, and of course you can find a link in the description below this video to their article. And you can also, of course, find their video, sorry, the video Secret Symbols PlayStation Podcast linked below is what I mean to say. So basically what he had to say is that the PS5 dev kit is quote-unquote very powerful. Now, of course, things can change from the dev kit to the release version and blah, blah, blah. But if the dev kit is very powerful, then the consumer version will be too. How powerful? How powerful versus its competitor no comment there unfortunately so not many specifics to be gleaned here but obviously given that he has many connections across the industry and especially across Sony because he covered PlayStation for many years when he used to work for IGN he undoubtedly still gets word from those same sources they he has undoubtedly heard from them that the PS5 is packing heat but of course from what we've heard the Xbox Series X is no slouch either so that is me done for this video. Hope you have enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.